Hey folks, Trace Waters here, and this is my high-powered LED pro light I made. And down here in my basement, trying it out on the Carolina Reaper, which is the current world record holding hot pepper. It is hot. And we have a jalapeno here that's going to overwinter and hopefully bloom and, and fruit in the meantime, which it is. I also have some Venus fly traps that will be going into dormancy here soon. Like I just said, this light is working. I've got flowers and I've got fruit, and it's great because it costs a whole heck of a lot less than what it would cost for you to get a grow light. It also runs on, you know, maybe about a fifth or maybe even a tenth of the electricity, and it'll last pretty much forever. 70,000 hours plus. That's nine years and 24 hours a day. And it probably lasts a whole lot longer than that. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I built it last spring and I hadn't got a chance to put it into use until this fall. So let's take a look at the plants so you can see some of the blooms and then take a look at the light and see the different components that make it up. Okay, so here now we're looking at uh, the jalapeno, and you can see it's got large fruits on it all over, as well as flowers, and then new peppers coming in all over. So even though this is actually not really in direct light of it I mean it's it's getting some light but it's not directly underneath it now here here's the reaper this I just assume it goes into dormancy because I really don't know what to do with these peppers let alone any more that might come in I already made the hot sauce I'm gonna make for the year so <clears throat> but as you can see it's got flowers coming in too and then here's the Venus fly traps if you're curious. And like I said, these need to go dormant for three months. I, I usually put them in a dormancy about Thanksgiving and then bring it bring them out at the beginning of March. So, so as you can see, we're getting some production and that's what matters. Alright, let's take a look at the light. All right, here's the light. I call it the Growinator, and this is why. Let's see, it's actually an old Xbox 360 I used for the chassis, and this happened to be the skin I had on it. So it has been dubbed the Growinator. And I don't know if you can tell or not. Obviously, you can see one is white and two are red. The one white one is a 100 watt LED and the two red ones are, are called 50 watt LEDs but they're really more like 30 something a piece. So I have the red in series and then of course the white on its own. As you can see I have them mounted on the heat sinks. Uh, the white one is mounted on an old IBM uh, computer chip heat sink and it came with a fan and then the reds are mounted on um, a heat sink I got off eBay and the fan from this heat sink is actually blowing the cool off the red too as well I actually I hooked the, uh, another uh, floor fan up to the timer to, to help cool the reds further so just to hopefully keep them around longer uh, the white LED the 100 watt I'm actually running off a 100 watt driver and that's plugged directly into the wall off the of AC so it's just the one component and it was a pretty nice looking piece of equipment now it was only you know, if I recall correctly I want to say it was at 32 volts and only 2.5 amps which this white I want to say can go up to 3.5 amps so it's it's short of the 100 watts um, 
I want to say it was like 80 something when I measured it. But it's, it's plenty of light, especially with these lenses, to, to suit my needs. Um, now the reds, I have a different setup. I have them running in series here. And I am running them off a 12 volt 10 amp power supply. And then I have that running into a boost converter so I can get 44 volts. And then I want to say I got 1.5 amps running to these reds, but again, this was a while ago, so I, my memory's a little fuzzy. You know, it's, it, if you want to do something like this, it, it's totally up to you on, on how you want to configure it. It seems like the commercial lights seem to actually have a lot more red to them. So that might be something I do in the future. We're just going to kind of sit tight with what this is and, and, and try and play around with it. So if you can take a look inside, and I'll show you the components um, separately one design problem with this is it's really hard to get apart so if you can see in here you can see there's the 12 volt power supply on the left and there's the 600 watt boost converter in the center and I don't know that you can see the the driver for the 100 watt but this is how I have it in here and I actually have a, a fan in the back there that's that's running the health pool off all the electronics so that's what it looks like on the inside now now if you you want to get an idea of what the driver that that looks like for the the 100 watt led this is a 50 watt led driver it looks pretty much the same except it's bigger and it's actually uh, seems to be better made than this one. I want to say it ran about 20 bucks uh, for the 100 watt LED driver. And then, of course, they have this 50 watt chip mounted on uh, actually the, one of the heat sinks from the Xbox. So, just to give you an idea what this looks like. Alright, so in conclusion, we can see that this build was a success, at least for me. It could be made to be much more efficient. Um, it's running on 130 watts, though, and that's that's pretty darn good to get the kind of growth I'm getting. And I'm sure once I get things arranged a little bit better, that I'll even get better results. Uh, comparable grow lights right now in the market, if you're going the traditional route, like the high pressure sodium or metal halide, you're looking at 1,000 watts. So, you know, obviously a huge energy savings right there alone. Uh, the other thing is, these last 70,000 plus hours, that's like 9 years of 24 hour a day usage, when in comparison your $100 1000 watt HPS is going to last a year. And, and in that year it's actually degrading its performance and that's not the case for the LEDs. Um, because I've been able to select the, the wavelength, uh, that helps tremendously too on the, the savings of, of energy. So, I hope you got something out of the video. I may in the future go into a more in-depth build of this uh, if, if people are interested. But um, it can be done. And just make sure you're careful. These, these are high voltages. Um, you can reach out and touch it. So, you want, uh, you want to get a little bit of working knowledge before you just dive into something like this. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube that will help you out. So, thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you next time.